Welcome to the Windy City Bender Podcast with your hosts, Noli, Boatsy, and Jerem. Hey, everybody. Episode 28, The Larmer. The Larmer. Steve. Steve Larmer. Grandpa, I think they called him. Grandpa. Grandpa. Because he was, he was old, okay. but he was sick. Uh, sick. Along with me, as per use, Noli. Hey. And Jerem. How's it going? Uh, per use. Pretty huh? great. Yeah. Because we got a good day today. Uh, we uh, we got a special uh, guest phone interview. Uh, U.S. Olympian. Kendall Coyne, Chicago native. Yeah, a huge round of applause for Kendall. Uh, she's and the boys. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> that was a big pickup by Boats. That was a big pickup. I that had a was... big day on Saturday. You did. I big t- off season transaction. I had a long weekend, you guys. <laughs> it was oh, it was something. I had to ask. I was rival res- territory too. Yeah, yeah you didn't. Yeah. You didn't respond on Twitter. So you said casinos are addicting. Well, you tweeted that out. So what was the damage? <laughs> Well, in a half an hour, uh, I, I dropped about $130. It's not, no, it's not terrible. No, it's, it's not. not but, like, I was sitting there, and I obviously was not in a great state of mind. But, and, like, I literally... <laughs> what, was, what was going on, Boats? I threw... I was hammered. <laughs> <laughs> I threw, like, 50 bucks down uh, on uh, the craps table, a game that I don't even know how to play. Yeah, what are you doing playing craps? <laughs> because one of the coaches came with me the day before oh and said... So that, you went back-to-back days. Yeah. Savage. Oh Thanks. My Absolutely ridiculous. I did pretty well the first day. I oh came out even. Oh, my God. Um, you- Youth coaching so. is really evolving. You know, <laughs> I, I remember, you know, coaches hanging out the at anybody the, that in wants, the lobby. Well, yeah, we were anybody that out. wants to have a good time, just start coaching youth hockey. We hung out in the lobby for a while, and then we we made our way to the casino. Well, I made I, I went solo on Saturday. That's how oh, uh, that's how bad it was. Man. Yeah. God. All right. So um, let's, yeah, let's, let's yeah. Let's, I, let's I threw my going. I threw my money down <laughs> on the craps table, and like I threw it had to be like fifty bucks. And I went. That's part of my rent. <laughs> there it goes. It's bye. Bye. So that's, but we took second place. So both teams. I was pretty happy about that. Yeah, Coach, coaches did for but, for the kids. Yeah, for the kids. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll have uh, our interview with Kendall. How did we get to me being an, an, an idiot? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That was, but it was it was it was worth it. Yeah, yeah. it was worth Maybe. it. I always enjoy those stories. Yeah, um, make me feel better about myself. Could almost do like a total poets move segment every week. Just you know, oh, let's let not. Please do. no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, we'll get to that Kendall uh, interview uh, a little bit later. Uh, but for now, we're going to start with some Black Hawk talk. Hacks. Ha- that was real nasally. Hacks. 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 Tack. Sounded almost like a, the, the Aflac duck. Aflac. Yeah. There it Hacks. Is. Uh, Corey Crawford's really good. He's he. Uh, he's not top 10, though. No, totally not top 10. Not top 10, though. No, he's not elite. No, absolutely no. not. Why would he be? He's got elite defensemen in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't do it with a straight face. Sorry. No. Uh, what were his uh, his shutout streak stats that uh, good old so, Mark Lazarus, Chicago Sun-Times? So over the past, throughout his career, he's had four shutout streaks that reached, I don't know, we'll say at least 135, 140 minutes or more. Uh, can we just stop there for a second? It's four. two games. It's four times in a row he's had back-to-back shutouts. Yeah. That's really hard at, to do. At least, at least, at least back to back. Give or, like that's, give or take. I don't it. think he's ever had three in a row, but like that's fast math, by the way, guys. That's yeah, nice. <laughs> that's so. It doesn't say who who is against, but October fifth or October twenty fifteen, he went one hundred and forty minutes and forty eight seconds without letting a goal. December twenty fifteen, so twice in one year, two months apart. 155 minutes and 16 seconds apart. That was the year that he really turned the tables. He was sick that year. Like yeah. he went from being like a really good goaltender to like, holy shit, this guy's was that awesome. contract year or was that post signing the contract? No, because he signed the contract 2013, didn't he? Okay, so after they won. The run. Okay, then this current streak that just ended on Sunday was 173 minutes and nine seconds, and his longest shutout streak came in January of 2011. Rookie year. Rookie year. By the way, 173 hmm. minutes and 45 seconds. I love Corey Crawford. <laughs> I I love Corey Crawford when he's on my fantasy team. Yeah. Oh, Damn. God. 
Talk about it. <laughs> fucking turn around over here. Holy right. cow. Hey, fucking. No, I'm talking about you. I'm fucking going from hating Crawford to loving him. Dude, mm-hmm. I will love him as long as he's on my team. I will love <laughs> the shit out of him. See, I don't, you don't I deserve just, him. I just, yeah, no, absolutely not. Make me an offer. Oh, fuck. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the offer. Deal. Um, I don't. I just don't understand how people still don't no like idea. him or well, think he's a it's the good tweet, goaltender. Yeah, like I it's literally it. just people. Like it's the NHL feeding it into the people who don't know the game. I tweeted this out too on Sunday before the Montreal game because I was I didn't play him just for strategic purposes. Whatever. I was looking at his thing. He's now the third highest ranked player in Yahoo Fantasy. Mm-hmm. He's still only taken in 98% of the leagues. Yeah. So 2% of the fantasy hockey leagues on Yahoo, he's a free agent. He's also, what, top in save percentage, top in goals against? I was just against, about to look that up. Second um, in shutouts? Tied for first in shutouts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's second, I don't know. Which that's another second stat. something. That's another thing. We'll pro- we can talk about NHL talk. Um, I think it was Cody Franson. Uh, he was talking to Lazarus. and um, Yeah. Was it Cody Franson? Yeah, Franson. Yeah. Uh, and he said, uh, Lazarus asked him about uh, what mer- makes Corey Crawford so good. And Francis was like, I've played against him multiple times in my career. And he's like, but playing in front of him, it's so different. And he just, he's so good. <laughs> like, you understand why he's an elite goaltender when you're playing in front of him. You understand, like, those little things that he does for your team and how he is in the locker room and all that jazz. <laughs> um, the- which kind of. Good. I, I, it kind of is the answer to our question of why isn't Corey Crawford good? It's because you don't know until you're like playing in front of him. I think that's going to change though this year. It's if he can keep this up with how bad our defense is, I think people are going to notice that more because you watch. I've been no, watching. No, but Duncan Keith's the greatest defenseman ever. Walked dude, I've been watching NHL and like all this other stuff, and they're even saying how they they don't nobody considers the Hots Cup contenders anymore. Our defense is they say is too old. They're not like where they used to be and if Crawford's putting up the numbers that he's currently putting up and he can do that year round I mean if they don't give him credit then which he's never gonna get absolutely can because look at last year yeah he was unbelievable last year here's the reason probably you could say that they went to the playoffs like there were so many games where he stood on his head like 100% and got the win for the team Mm -hmm. yeah I just I don't get it and like going back to what Cody Fronson said um, like just the little things that he does like last night during the game or two nights ago no last night um, like he, he made a save and it dropped right in front of him and a guy on Montreal went to go slam it home and he just completely full like his whole stick just whipped it into the corner like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not many goalies can do that in that quick of a time like he knew mm-hmm. exactly where it was going to land and just smacked it real quick out of out of the way and I was like damn damn <laughs> damn um He's first in save percentage, first in goals against, uh, tied for 10th in wins, which is remarkable. That's on the Hawks. Yes. That is remarkable. Um, he is fourth in uh, shot against. He has 400 on the nose, uh, only behind uh, Andre Vasilevsky, Mike Smith, and Freddie Anderson. Which Vasilevsky shots against? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he's Vasilevsky's been okay. He's got a 924 and a 252. Uh, I, I bet he's pretty thankful he's got that top line out there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's also got like 12 wins. Right. That's like old. That's like the old Blackhawks right there. It doesn't yeah. matter who you put in that. 100%. They're going to be fine. Um, he's averaging, Corey Crawford uh, is averaging 31 shots a game. I mean, a 177 and a 945, 13 games in, yeah. is stupid. Stupid. I mean, I mean, it's elite numbers. Hundred <laughs> percent elite say. numbers. <laughs> Hell not, yes. Not an elite player though. Yeah. Um, we want Jonathan Quick. <laughs> uh, Hawks got a pretty big win against the Flyers. Yeah, it was a. It was a. It was a Wednesday night rivalry. Wednesday night rivalry. Biggest rivalry in sports. Well, except they've met in the final once. But <laughs> Pittsburgh and Edmonton were also on at the same time on Wednesday again, and, and they didn't do that one. Come on, Poets. That's not a rivalry. Pittsburgh, Edmonton. When have they ever played in the final against each other? Brutal. Can I? Who declared that the Red Wings and the Sabers are rivals? Um, everyone ever. NBC when they picked Dominic Hasek when he went Who? from when That's he played for both teams. That's honest to God. That is the 
only <laughs> correlation I can I can make there. Yeah, me too. That's why I said it. That's unbelievable. <laughs> like, did <sighs> it's just poor marketing? It's come stupid. It Wednesday night. Robbery. Well, I mean, it's it's coming from the same people that don't want to be in the Olympics. So, uh, yeah. What do you, do you really expect more than that? Um, Wednesday night rivalry, quote unquote. Um, rivalry. Rivalry. Um, I thought it was gonna be the wake up call for the Hawks. Well, it was zero zero through the first, um, for uh, the first of three straight games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And then Artemi, Ar- Artem, 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 Artem. Sorry, Ron. Artemi, Artemi, Ro- Ron Russian, it's Ron Russian. Soon. He's not doing anything in Columbus. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm, well, yeah, Saad's not absolutely. doing anything for us right now either. But that's besides the point. Yeah, but he scored like seven goals. In the yeah. First well, two where is he now? And... Um, Artem Anisimov gets it going on the power play. Our dread for a power play. Almost shit um, my pants when I saw that. Oh my god! Another Cody Fronson assist on the power play. Yep. Just yeah. saying. Just saying. Um. And then what? Like twenty twenty seconds, seconds yeah. after that, Jonathan Taves on a breakaway. Vintage, vintage Taves. Yes, it was. Uh, I was pretty happy yep. to see that. I thought that Five that might spark e- the plug there exactly for Johnny. Twenty seconds later. Yeah. Um. Forehand, backhand, through the five hole. Brian Elliott's groin slingshot it all the way back to Philadelphia. It's pretty I f- great. I feel like that's woken Taze up. He, he's been I, playing well. He's been playing last, really well last, the past three games. Yeah. The last three games, he's been one of the best guys on the ice, yeah. mm-hmm. and he's had the most chances probably out of anybody. Noticeably yeah. out there, like, holy crap, Taze is out Absolutely. there kind of thing. Yeah. And that goal, like you said, was just vintage Taze just – Muscling through, just wheeling all the way down, and then just five, yeah, hole. five hole, mm-hmm. five hole Belgi, uh, and then five <laughs> hole Belgi, um, and then icing on the cake comes from uh, the cat, the cat, Brinksy, the cat, Brinksy, Kitty. What are they calling him? Have they I didn't determined yet? Is it Brinksy? It, it's I, Brinksy. It's been Brinksy, the cat. Uh, uh, Q says the cat. I think all the boys um, call him Brinksy. Uh, Kitty. I well. What? Oh, I call him Kitty 100%. I would absolutely call him Kitty. <laughs> behind, behind closed doors, what do you think they're actually calling him? Oh, I'm calling him Kitty. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the Kitty. <laughs> the not, Kitty. Not just the Kitty. No, it's the I mean, Kitty. It's the Brinket, so it's the Kitty. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and what, that, was, that's good. what was that amazing thing that I tweeted about that they, they revealed about him that game? Oh, fuck. he is still taking high school classes. <laughs> yeah. Th- oh, yeah. Um, so that's hilarious. Yeah. So Carey Price, you let a high schooler score on you. <laughs> His first <laughs> NHL goal. His first NHL goal. Um, oh my god, that's hilarious. Great. Yeah, uh, unreal. Yeah. And then the Hawks head into uh, Minnesota a couple days later. Uh, it's a bug. Oh, Corey Crawford also thirty-five saves in that shutout win against. Be, uh, how many? Uh, Philadelphia. Uh, go ahead. Keep talking. I just want to see. Just kidding. Don't talk. Uh, Hawks had thirty-five <laughs> shots. Because you just were talking over me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hawks had thirty-five shots that game. So it was even. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Hawks going to Minnesota. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Pause, pause, pause again. <laughs> um, one for four in the power play. Not terrible. I actually kind of I like the movement on the power play. At least. They weren't Cody getting... Franz, they made a huge difference out there. Yeah, they weren't t- getting any production. Okay, but... so last episode we were talking about like, oh, the the Hawks power play has elite players and they don't change it up. But Ovi and I argued that you know Ovi, you know you know where they're going on the Capitals power play, and you said that we don't have a guy for a one timer. Cody Franzen. He has a rocket. Yeah, that Fucking thing is a feed missile. Caner to Cody Franzen. It's going to get on net too. He gets it through, and then Anisimov in front has been tipping it like yeah. crazy. He, uh, Franzen, that was a dead on shot, and Elliot probably should have had it, but it got on him so fast that he wasn't able to suck it up, and it squirted it through, and it went right to I feel like, yeah, anytime he shoots, yeah. you got to go to the net because I feel like there's going to be a rebound because it's yeah. so hard. It's just, and it's, it's I unlike think it was, all the other Hawks defense where it actually hits the net yeah, or yeah. is right in front and of the net. And it's low too. It's not like he's shooting high, it's exactly. perfect tipping height. Um, I think it was Eddie who was talking about uh, how his shot, it's not fast. It's just so heavy and hard that it gets through. Like a like a Weber bomb. Yeah, <laughs> except his is also fast. Yeah, he, yeah he's got the, he's got he's got the full, full he's got power. Both. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brandon. 
Still never forget that. Yeah. Wasted. <laughs> uh, Minnesota. Hawks travel up there for the first time this year uh, after losing to Minnesota, what, like 3-1 to one or something like that? That no, was the offside. That was the that offside. Was the offsides oh, debate. yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, it was, what, like 5-2 then, I think? 5-2. Yeah, 5-2, 5-1. Yeah, um, Hawks going to Minnesota, play another pretty decent hockey game. Uh, 0-0 through the first uh, and the second uh, until Artem Anisimov in on front the power of the play net, again. on the power play. Again, I think that shot came from Keith. It did. Uh, and Anisimov, and, and about belt high. Mm-hmm. Takes I, her home. I feel like Anisimov's finally learning to play his role on this team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The last couple of games, he's been looking pretty good, and he's. I think he's starting to realize he's on the third line and he doesn't have Tate or uh, Kane and Panarin around him anymore. Mm-hmm. So he's starting to play that third line center role a lot better, and I feel like he's just more comfortable at it now. What? Is his face off percent at? I couldn't tell you. Well, I'm about to. Uh, I know. Uh, I was listening to the the game on the radio coming home uh, last night, and Chris Bowden said uh, that the Hawks were at like 64 percent or something uh, against Minnesota. Uh, which they is, finished 56 percent. There's a six in there. I knew there's a six in there <laughs> at some point. Um, I, f- I think which is pretty good they've because been, we've. They've that been was above the big 50. issue for us, not just in the playoffs last year. I mean, it really showed in the playoffs last year, but absolutely all year long. Well, was a pretty like big issue for us. Savard said, "You need the you need the puck to fucking score goals, mm-hmm. so winning the faceoff is huge." Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like most of the year they have been winning. Do you uh, need any the faceoff else? percentages? Yeah, do you have it? Yeah, that'd be great. Fifty four point three seven. Not That's, terrible because he was he was the big issue for us. Well, him and Taze. And Taze honestly, a, Taze's numbers aren't terrible right now because no, he doesn't not. fucking take faceoffs. He's going to toss every goddamn time. <laughs> Taze He's, is 57.8. John Hayden is 62.5. Wow. And Patrick Kane's a big 1 0 0. Yeah. One I had for to, one, baby. I. I mm. Seabrook's a big O, though. Yeah. He's lost Typical. a couple of days taken. Yeah, well. Thanks for that 7 million. Yeah. <laughs> Win a faceoff, bud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many times I heard on the radio last night Taves get kicked out of the faceoff circle. It was ridiculous. Again. Every single time he went in for a draw, he got kicked. And he, you know him, he he's a fucking hothead when oh, it yeah. comes yeah. to his game. Yeah. He's a fucking hothead. I mean, we're 13 games in here. I mean, is it really that hard for him to figure I feel it like, out? I feel like he's the only one left that's still getting tossed every game. I mean, it's like uh, uh, Uncle Leo not putting his visor all the way down. He's <laughs> yeah. just stubborn. Yeah. Um. And then to bring it again, another empty net. Yep. That's his specialty, I guess. Yeah. He, he almost had he, two. He could have had like four. Yeah. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. That was unreal. Oh, and then uh, was it Panic? Panic hits the side panic. of the net. <laughs> yeah, that would really help me out. Hit the side of the net. <laughs> that would help me out on fantasy. But, I mean, oh well. you won anywhere, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so over the last three games, the Hawks have five goals for two against, and two of them are empty netters. Yeah. Not great. No. Not not great. Too great, but two power play goals. I yeah. think I saw. I can't remember what the exact said. I think they've only had one. It was yeah. So one, only one goal is a five on five goal. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you're not gonna win hockey like that, no. especially when our power play is shitty. Yeah, I mean they went one for four again against Minnesota, thirty five shots on goal again. So they've been getting a lot of shots. I but feel like they've just gotten to the shots. point to where they're just like, we are in the zone, throw it on net. I don't care. Yeah, because it really is. Because, I mean, and then when you break it down, it's like the first period is just a shit ton, and then it just drops off after that. Because, like, yeah. in uh, Minnesota, they had 16 shots and goal in the first, and then nine in the second, and then 10 in the third. Yeah. Uh, that was not the case on Sunday against Montreal, where they peppered rookie goaltender uh Oh boy, I got it. Thank you, uh, uh, Lindgren. Lindgren, yeah, uh, rookie goaltender. Fifth. Jamal Mayers didn't even know it. He centered in the in the intermission. He's like, yeah, that young Montreal goalie. You know, he <laughs> hilarious. <gets it. laughs> yeah, uh, fifth NHL game. His record. Fourth. I thought he's he four zero. He was four zero going into that game. I thought. No, that was his fourth game. He got a sure? shout out in his okay. fourth game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, his numbers were great 
going up to that point. He had mm-hmm. like a one point something. He was in the 940s in his save percentage. Um, and it showed. I mean, that kid battled. That kid was good. 124 goals against and 960 save percentage. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> crazy. Uh, that's after the Hawks game, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, American boy. Yeah. Uh, St. Cloud State University. Yeah, that's right. So, um, oh, yeah, that's I the guy feel... he signed. And I'm like, why would you go sign in Montreal? You're never going to play. <laughs> well, Bingo. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Fuck you, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> um, am I nuts? But or do the Hawks just really have a hard time with right-handed catching goaltenders? They just have a hard right-handed time with catching goaltender. I didn't even realize that. I just have a hard time with young. What game were you watching? I don't know. I, I really don't. <laughs> you don't pay attention to that details. Goals are relevant. So, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know Jonas Hiller was a right-handed. Yeah. catching and I, it threw me off every game i was like oh fuck third yeah. period oh shit he gloved yeah. that with his right hand so that's weird <laughs> he's got two blockers out there yeah i honestly yeah. i didn't even notice that yeah I, I feel like the hawks just struggle with right they it, struggle with that and guys that they've never seen before yeah yeah I was say, absolutely. vegas mm-hmm. was another case mm-hmm. um i feel like red, this, red obera a couple of years ago yeah, red obera's yeah. ass and the hawks i feel like this was like the perfect like mixture because like obviously it was scoreless between in the first two periods where the hawks struggled against a new kid and mm-hmm. crow was playing montreal so mm-hmm. obviously he's gonna have great numbers <laughs> mm-hmm. uh and then third period starts jonathan drewin comes in and beats craig crawford on one that crow probably wanted back yeah he looked he looked weird on that one um yeah uh i believe he broke off the boards from the blue line on the cut, right side cut to the middle cut around murphy yeah and murphy just couldn't keep up with him yeah, and then I, uh, he was flat-footed af and then um uh, he kind of he got he kept looking like he was gonna pass, and I think Crow got caught leaning because he thought he was gonna pass. And the he thing threw was, a short that there side. was nobody. Of, no, on there the wasn't. Other side. But I don't think Crawford um, yeah. looked. You know, he, I think um, he had his eye on Drew in. Yeah, um, it's weird to say Crawford wants that one back when it's his yeah. first one in three fucking <laughs> yeah. games. I mean, yeah. first one of November. Yeah, <laughs> oh. Um, oh. Oh. don't put it like that. That's <laughs> <Jesus feels Christ>. terrible. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Um, he didn't let a goal in since October. The Hawks were terrible for the first 15 minutes of the third period. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had a shot until, like, the 10-minute mark, and it was a dump in. (laughs) Um, I mean, after two periods of just throwing it from anywhere and everywhere, they just couldn't get anything going. Yeah. And then we had a power play, perfect opportunity to get something going, and the Canadians had more pressure than the Hawks ever did. Yep. That's the story of the power play. Yeah. Uh, 0 for 3. In that game, they kept Montreal 0 for 3 also on the power play, though. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the good. The kill's been great. Yeah. Kill's been very just, good. You said you didn't watch the game. Did you see Shaw? I listened to it the whole time. Did you see the... Shaw just put Siebes on his ass? And then I, and then Siebes went after him? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would gotta, like to hear what, uh, what, was said. what the dialogue was there. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure. I, I don't know. There. I thought it was like one of those moments where I was like, oh, fuck you, Shaw. And then I was like, eh, okay. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, that's All who right. he is. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this is how other teams feel like now. Um, Canadians end up getting one to ice the ice the cake, making it 2 nothing. Morrow with his first of the season. Another play where Murphy, Murphy. was at fault. He, he was so he bad went, that game. Went for a battle in the corner, completely lost it. They threw it up to the point and just yeah. fed it home. He just does not look like he's an NHL player. No. He, he just – I don't know if he needs to go down to the A to get, you know, to get going. He needs going to go play in Arizona or, because yeah, then he would technically I, be I an feel NHL like player. that might be an issue. He's been on Arizona so for so long where, like, it's okay for them to get, you know, 35 shots against per game. You know? See, but it's like I was thinking, oh, maybe send him down to the A, but if we send him down, that's what, Svedberg coming up? Ugh. Yeah. Um, Which is worse. Um, I, I, it'd be great if Polka came back. Oh yeah, Polka. Yeah, get him his ass up, man. But then, you know, they looked stupid trading Jarmelson for Murphy and throwing Murphy. Yeah, they already look stupid for that. Yeah, they do. Um, <clears throat> but we got Franzen, and Franz has been great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about? Um, I'm not just gonna isolate Keith here because every single one of our Hawks defensemen do it and Suck. has done it for the last nine years why is there an opposing player allowed to be in front of Corey crawford 
basically in and the crease. Untouched. Basically mm-hmm. in the crease. Completely untouched. Yeah. Was that that was the second goal? That was that goal. second goal. Yeah. Why is so Connor Murphy, that was his fault. Absolutely. Yeah. Well the but the turnover was the turnover his was his fault, and it went out to the blue line and they scored on it. And it was he, Shaw in and front he was too. late coming back to the uh, It was Shaw. Yeah. Yeah. And he was late coming back to the front of the net to get Shaw. But Duncan Keith is in between the hash five marks. Feet away. Yep. Doing absolutely nothing. And he's with around stick, nobody. With a stick in the air, not on the ice, and just standing there. What watching. is the point of that? You can, the Hawks have done that for ever since Quinville's been I don't here. think yeah. I think maybe Jarmelson was the only one to ever clear out no, the front of that. Hammer and did it too. Even he wouldn't yeah. do it as much, but he did it the most out of anybody. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't it get it. It doesn't make either. any sense. And it's 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 frustrating because you see how frustrated our guys get in front of other teams' nets because they're always getting pushed around. Yeah. And they can't get they get their ass right in front kicked. of the goalie. Yeah, but do whatever. Hey, man, sit down and play a game of chess if you want. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. It'll fuck you. You'll have time. I don't get it either. That, I don't, that pisses me off. Yeah, I, special. I really don't get it. Um, I mean, that's what you get taught when you're a kid, when you're a defenseman. Yeah. Clear out the front of the net so your goalie can see. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. None at all. Um, but Charlie Lindgren played a hell of a hockey game. What were the final shots for the Hawks? Do you remember? 35. 35? Yep. Jeez. I'm pretty positive. Uh, Montreal had 35. I know that. I'll double check. Yeah. Um, but he earned every ounce of that shutout. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, even though I don't want him to. But he, he got me a game and go from Juin. So it's like. Uh, 38. Ah. Sorry. 38. Yeah. Um, I don't is know. Is it bad that, like, last time we talked, we were talking about, like, is it time to panic and all that? And then nice time <laughs> time has passed since the last time we recorded. Now we're recording now. And I don't feel any different, even though we just won I, two games. I kind of feel a bit better, though. Uh, I don't I don't know about you guys, but. I don't think we win those two games, though, if it wasn't for Crawford. Yeah, But that's the good thing is Crawford's our goalie. Yeah. But how, well, how, uh, you how know often, what? like, how... I'll, How much longer can you know Crawford be the one carrying us like that? There were you know? quite a few breakaways uh, in the th- three games that he had a shutout streak going. Uh, He's unreal. Two point two point seven five or whatever. Not a big deal. Yeah, not a big deal. <laughs> um, but also, plenty of the shots that he were getting, he were getting <laughs> that he, he was getting. getting that, <laughs> Plenty of them shots that he were getting, uh, that he was getting. Um, they were, they weren't necessarily high quality shots. There were a few every now and then, but it was kind of like what the Hawks have been doing. You yeah. know, they really have made it, it, it just pepper in the net. Yeah, they really made it uh, um, a point to keep shots from the outside and limit second chance opportunities. Not uh, high high quality, scoring not high chances. quality scoring chances. Um, albeit there have been quite a few odd man rushes, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, Hawks go back to Philadelphia uh, on Thursday, and then they meet Scott Darling, Tavo, and Krugs on Trevor Saturday. Names, Nordstrom. And TVR. And TVR. And Nordstrom. Damn. Yep. It's like the Atlanta Blackhawks all over again. <laughs> or the, the Florida. Florida the Florida Blackhawks. Blackhawks the Winnipeg Carolina. Blackhawks. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't feel... I feel... I don't feel worse. I don't feel better. I don't feel worse, but I don't feel feel, like I don't feel feel better. Like, like I feel like the Hawks are like they're either like just they're right there, and then they're just gonna be awesome, or it's just gonna be like this all year long, and we're just gonna Mm -hmm. be like, oh, we're so close. But if it's gonna be like this all year, this is gonna be brutal. Yeah, and it's gonna be another first round exit if they make the playoffs. Because right now it's it's not looking good. Honestly, the rest of the league is so good. Yeah, like let's see. I think they're in the second wild card spot right now. We uh, think yeah, they got we bumped. Are. No, I think we're in the first. They got one. changed again. Yeah, Nashville's below us. Who just got better? Yeah. Yep. Big trade. Uh, we'll talk about that in a hot second. No, we hot got takes. we got bumped. Yeah, hot takes. We were technically tied for the wild card spot oh, between really? five teams. Oh yeah, well, that's super unfortunate. Six teams technically, if you count San Jose and well, Dallas. The and last Dallas, two teams yeah. of the in the Pacific and Central are yeah. both all tied for 16 points yeah. as well. Um, Hawks, it Calgary, is Nashville, so tight. Colorado, Vancouver, San Jose, and Dallas. Vancouver and Colorado are technically in right now. Minus Edmonton and Arizona right now. Yeah, every team in the West is in this. <laughs> Fuck 
in Edmonton. Fuck you, Edmonton. <laughs> um, Thanks a lot, Cam Talbot. So <laughs> glad I drafted you. <laughs> Not. <laughs> um, last Hawks thing I want to uh, touch on. Uh, there's some potential that Alex DeBrinkett, uh starts to heat it up here. Uh, they moved him from the right side and put him on the left side where he's more comfortable, where he played all juniors and scored a shit ton of points. And uh, Montreal was the first time that they had moved him there. He was he looked awesome. good. Yeah, he looked really good. He that was game. awesome on that left side. So he's like Taze too. He's starting to get more noticeable out there. Mm-hmm. Like for not being a, a superstar player, like kind of mm-hmm. like doesn't he blended in those first couple games? I yeah. forgot that he was even this big hype kind of thing, but now. Yeah past couple games even since he's got changed up to that taze line mm-hmm. he's well, been doing better well not only that but just jumping around from line to line yeah. going from the first to the fourth to the second to the fourth to the third like it's it's a lot that's a lot you're trying to establish yourself but you don't have a consistent line yeah. mate. like that's yeah that's rough that's really hard yeah um so yeah let's see if he's able to pot some genos god knows we need him from somebody hey man so. just keep pulling your goalie he'll find it yeah well that's anyway, that's rude. All right, we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna talk to Kendall Coin here when we uh, when we get back. Hey, we are uh, we got a special guest here today, boys. We got uh, U.S. Olympian Kendall Coin. Kendall, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Uh, sunny Florida, huh? A lot different than Chicago. <laughs> yeah, especially right now on November six. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a bit chilly. I was working outside all day, so you have no idea how <laughs> much I wish I was in your place right now. <laughs> <laughs> I miss I miss Chicago though. I miss the winter. Yeah. How uh, how's training been going? Uh, it's been going well. We started our uh, tour about two weeks ago in Quebec City against Canada, and then we played them in Boston. Uh, mm-hmm. We split the series, and then um, we're actually starting the Four Nations Cup tomorrow. Um, we're opening up against Finland uh, at 7.30. Awesome. So that's that's what that upcoming tournament is going to be then? Yep. Yeah, so it's okay. Four Nations. So it's the four rival countries, uh, Austin, Canada, Sweden, and Finland. And it's every year. So um, even through the Olympic year, uh, we still have a Four Nations Cup, and it's being hosted here in Tampa where we are. Um, so it's pretty funny to see uh, some of the other countries come down here with winter coats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, does that like uh, rotate every year? Is it in a different country every year? Uh, yes, it rotates among the four um, countries. So every cool. every time during the Olympic year, it's in the United States. Oh, well, that's pretty helpful yeah, for that's you guys neat. then, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> um. So you got yourself a fundraiser uh, coming up uh, in late November. It's November twenty sixth, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the 22nd. 22nd. Ooh. Close. Super close. <laughs> it's a 22nd. It's at Arctic Ice Arena. Why don't you take us through that? Uh, yeah. So pretty much, um, when, you know, obviously going to the Olympic Games is a tremendous honor. It's, it's so special. And, um, obviously I'll be the one playing, but ultimately my family's the one that have made the ultimate sacrifices for me to, to be there and, um, go with, and when going to the Olympic Games, it's obviously an extremely expensive trip over mm-hmm. two and a half weeks. Um, last time I was in Russia, this time it's in South Korea. And um, so we're putting on a fundraiser just to help offset the cost of attending an Olympic Games, um, you know, in terms of lodging, flights, food, uh, tickets, and mm-hmm. just an array of expenses that go into an Olympic Games. Well, that's awesome. Uh, how can uh, How can people help you guys out? Yeah, just, uh, I mean, come to the event. It'll be awesome. Um, there'll be a, an open skate and I'll be jumping on the ice and, um, you know, there's a website, it's kendallcoin.com slash Olympics, uh, with a small O and you can find all the information there. Um, you can donate funds there. And, um, ultimately I think what's so cool about the fundraiser is just the support that people show and how special, you know, especially the South side of Chicago and the, mm-hmm. the community is, and, um, just the support so far has been pretty overwhelming and special. Yeah. Well, I mean, personally, just from us three, I know, seeing you out there watching you in the Olympics. It's, it's definitely cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. We, we kind of, you know, we don't, some of us don't know you personally, but we definitely use your name a lot to say, you know, we, we know you and Mm -hmm. it's really cool. She scored on me a lot when I was a kid. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's an, it's an honor. And that's kind of why, 
um, the t-shirts actually that we designed to for the fundraiser. Um, I was adamant about having a you know a little bit of a Chicago tribute in those mm-hmm. t-shirts. So you'll see on the back of them there's number twenty. My number twenty six is outlined in the Chicago flag, um, just because it means so much to me. Where I grew up, my roots. Obviously, Andy, as you know, the Arctic Ice Arena was our home for a very long time. Yeah. And still is, um, but. Uh, that's kind of, you know, it's always, it's special to be from Chicago. Yeah, representing that OPIA. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Represent the OPIA. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, I know you said you are going to be hopping on the ice and everything, but I, I'm, I think that you should have like a, a like a power lifting or like a bench press <laughs> thing. If somebody can bench more than you, they get to win a certain prize or something. I don't know. I don't well, think anybody's going to be able to do that, but you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, off season shapes a lot different than in season shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings me to my next point. How uh, how were you able to get in shape for? Well, I'm sure you already were in shape, but what were, did what did you do differently for uh, this Olympics compared to the last one? Um, I would say it was it's more of intangible versus a tangible um, thing. You know, I think this time around, I'm definitely enjoying uh, the experience a lot more, um, taking in the little things, um, cherishing the games that we play on tour because they are only every four years. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just being a little bit more experienced is also sharing my previous experience with you know the first timers on the team and the things I wish I would have done differently. And mm-hmm. um, so I think it's more so. Um, just enjoying it a little bit more and you know it's a lot of hard work but um, if I didn't want to do it I, I wouldn't be here right yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right so like you said it's the Olympics only come around every four years so how, how do you kind of make sure you're like ready for them every four years and do you keep in touch with the rest of the team do you ever like skate with them all, like in between yeah, so it's kind of a long answer to that question, but I'll give you the short answer. <laughs> um, we appreciate so, that. <laughs> yeah, so obviously um, every non-Olympic year we still have a national team season, mm-hmm. and we meet about seven times. We have our World Championships, our Four Nation Cup, um, so we and we play a few exhibition games. So we, we still have national team stuff in non-Olympic years, but that's the biggest challenge for women's hockey players uh, when you're out of college is what what's next. Um, mm-hmm. they're, they're trying to create a pro league. Um, and make it sustainable enough for us to play, but the finances aren't there yet. So it's just right. you have to do a lot. And um, as you guys might know, I I did some work with the Blackhawks and um, part time, and then I played for the Minnesota Whitecaps last year, which is an independent team in Minnesota. Um, and I would practice with a boys team in Colorado. So it's kind of confusing, but um, you find you definitely find a way because you love the game. <laughs> You don't realize it, but you just hit on like half of our questions. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty unbelievable. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, so that going back to that first Olympics, um, I remember uh, Noli and I. We were on the bus uh, after one of our uh, one of our road trips, and we were watching the the gold medal game on on our phone, and we were we were heartbroken for you guys. I mean, that was that was just terrible i mean i i can't even imagine how you guys felt um but besides that how was that first olympic experience yeah it's i mean the heartbreak is tough because obviously the ultimate goal is not to go there and enjoy the olympic games it's to walk away with a gold medal and we worked so hard for mm-hmm. that moment and you know obviously the way that it came down to is giving up a two goal lead with two minutes to go is not easy um but you know what as an elite as an elite athlete and a competitor if you don't learn from it you're you're not going to get over it um so we definitely have learned from it and you know the the experience in itself it was it was pretty surreal just seeing all the other athletes the other countries realizing that you you represent something that's so much bigger than yourself mm-hmm. and um you know representing the united states delegation is a surreal feeling and um you know it's something that i never take for granted never take lightly and um it's a tremendous honor that's so cool yeah that's a, that's that so cool <laughs> <laughs> damn so um going back to the the gold medal game did that really fire you guys up for this next olympics i mean are you guys is it kind of in the back of your head Do you, are, are you trying to look past it or does it fire you guys up Uh, It definitely fires you up, and um, like I said, you learn from it. Um, You can't dwell on it, Um, but we definitely know 
what we could have what we could have done in that moment and um, obviously you work to ensure it doesn't happen again but we've played so many games since then and world championships and you know we've, we've gained a lot of confidence we've won the last four world championships so um, it's you know learning from the positives as well and what we what we've been doing so well with like four years since four years ago mm-hmm. yeah I mean sounds like you guys are on the right path that's yeah. for sure <laughs> thank you <laughs> um I don't even know. Do you know how how big your name is? I mean, you're getting thrown around with names like Hillary Knight and Amanda Kessel and and Megan Bozak. And I mean, you you had a, a CCM commercial for God's sakes. I mean, <laughs> that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Thank you. I don't. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it's cool, and I think the the biggest part for me is, as I'm sure you saw in that commercial, is just to inspire the next generation of girls and not as sort of hockey players, but just to follow their dreams and, mm-hmm. um, you know, don't let anyone tell you differently because it wasn't easy. And, you know, you, you get told and called names and, you know, if you, you, you succumb to the pressure, you never know what you could have accomplished. I got chills. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. Um, so as everybody knows, the NHL is not going to be participating in the Olympics. Um, and mm-hmm. as of recent events, the KHL, uh, is also uh, not going to be there. Um, you guys were always a huge part of of uh, the Olympics for hockey players. Uh, I know myself, I would always watch the men and the women's. Um, but how did uh, those guys not going affect you? Um, I wouldn't say there was a direct impact on us. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it's it's disappointing because the Olympic – spirit embodies the most elite and best athletes um, competing in their respected sports Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously that won't be the case in terms of men's hockey Um, but I'm really excited to see uh, what happens Um, I think it's going to be pretty cool it's going to remind us a lot about a lot of 1980 um, but at the same time um, to hear some of the NHL players and speak of disappointment and, um, you know, their love for playing for their country, um, is, is a bummer and you can't fault them for that because yeah. like I told you guys earlier, it's, it's one of the greatest honors to be able to represent your country. And, um, unfortunately they won't have that opportunity. Is there uh, any more like additional excitement on your guys' behalf that, you know, these people that watch the men's that typically don't watch women's hockey might be checking you watching more of you guys now because obviously it's gonna be the best of the best for the women's and NHL just might not or the men's Olympics just might not seem as much of a priority to watch. Um, I I I don't know. Um, if you actually look back to 2014, our game against Canada was the most watched event uh, in the Olympic Games in 2014. So I would say we still have. Um, if not more viewers we just have we have the exact same Mm -hmm. amount of viewers um but you know it'll be interesting to see it's obviously something i don't i'm not too worried about yeah um but we'll see how it goes how much do you hate canada (laughs) (laughs) um just a general question (laughs) it's definitely a respected rivalry for sure okay it's it's a game that you look forward to um you want to be a part of and it's a game that you train your butt off for yeah, that's why I'm I'm not anywhere important. I would be like, oh, I hate them. They're the worst. <laughs> um, for those who uh, don't know your career so well, why don't you uh, why don't you go through it for them? Uh, tell them your stops along the way. Uh, you can leave out uh, house league when um, you uh, ruin me. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my career started, like you said earlier, at the OPIA, or the Park Ice Arena. Mm-hmm. Um, I started skiing there out, at the outdoor rink. That's now the championship rink. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was three years old, because my older brother, Kevin, was playing, and I was dragged to the rink with him, and I just told my parents I want to do what he does. Um, they put me in figure skates for a week, because uh, that's all I allowed, and they got me hockey skates, and obviously I haven't looked back since, but... Um, and then from there, it, it definitely wasn't easy. Um, I played house league um, or, you know, in-house, whatever you call it. And then mm-hmm. um, I tried out for um, the local team uh, and got cut a couple of years in a row. And uh, it was hard to see all my friends, you know, keep making it, making it to the next level of double A. And I just never made it. Um, so I tried out. I just, you know, my house league was just getting a little bit too redundant for me and, 
my parents said I could try out for a triple A team and um but it was with a group of boys that were a year older than me and I actually made the team so I went from house league to triple A which was at the time I had no idea I just wanted to play hockey but when I look back it was a huge moment in my career because it I think that really showed that I can I can play the game and from there uh, I played boys hockey and then I switched to girls hockey with the Chicago Mission and then I went on to Northeastern University in Boston and played four years there um, and received my bachelor's and master's degree from there and um, yeah here I am today. <laughs> How stupid do those coaches feel now that, <laughs> that cut Kendall coin? That's oh man. What idiots! But, you know, it might you you can put it that way, or I can say thank you because it only yeah, true. motivated yeah, me to get, true. get better, and it happens. And that's what I say to kids all the time: it happens to everybody, and mm. you can't be discouraged, and you have to keep keep working and and just stick the course and keep going. Well, Kendall, we thank you for this. We know you got to get somewhere. Uh, we're gonna have a couple <laughs> quick, fun questions for you. Um, okay. What is your best hockey memory? Ooh. Ooh. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. I started with the tough one. <laughs> um, my best hockey memory, um, ooh, I would have to say, would be the first time I saw my entire family in Sochi in 2014 at the Olympic Games. Um, it was after one of my games, and uh, I think to me that was the moment that it hit me that we made it and it wasn't that I just made it to the Olympics. It was that my entire family did. Cause like I said, it, it, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's definitely a team effort. Yeah. That's, that's the, gotta be an amazing yeah. moment. Was right in the feels, <laughs> yeah. right in the feels on that one. Uh, <laughs> who is the most famous person in your phone contacts and your fiance does not count. <laughs> Wait, say that again. You broke up. <laughs> the most famous person you have in your phone contacts and your fiance doesn't count. <laughs> Oh, um, your fiance, by the way, for those who don't know, is uh, Michael Schofield, Super Bowl champion. Uh, <laughs> Not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Okay, well, they're all so famous. We they're all famous. <laughs> yeah. I, I know what his would be. His would definitely be Peyton Manning. <laughs> that's true. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a good. Yeah, we'll count that's that. A good answer. We'll count that. That's a good answer. <laughs> all right. Last and most important, what uh, advice do you have for girls wanting to get into hockey? Uh, I would say try it. Um, you know, you're going to fall down. You're, it's going to be tough at first, but um, stick to it and ultimately play the game because you love it and not because someone else does. And um, if you love what you do, it'll take you pretty far in life. I think that's that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Kendall Coyne, thank you so much. This has been so fun. Uh, help out Kendall. Uh, she's got her fundraiser November 22nd. <laughs> at Arctic Ice Arena. Uh, she'll be there. She'll be on the ice. We'll get to meet her. She's just as great in person as she is on the phone. Kendall, good luck with everything. We wish you the best. Uh, thank, thank you again. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was great talking to you guys. Thanks, thank you, Kendall. Thank you. Yeah. How awesome was that? It was a good time. That was sick. We did it, guys. We did it. We, we did, did it. Thing. <laughs> we did the thing. Don't want to say we peaked too early on this show. <laughs> yeah, <but>. I know. <laughs> it only took us 28 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all right. That was cool. Uh, thanks again to Kendall Coyne. Um, I'm going to link her uh, her website with all the information for her fundraiser. Yeah. I'll put it in the description for this 100%. episode. I'll put it on our social media. Um, yeah. Check that out. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's jump into some chill talk. Big, 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 big news. Huge. Huge. Matt Duchesne finally gets out of Colorado. That poor bastard. He and you know now what? Now that they're winning. <laughs> the, his, yeah. I feel like his exit was so perfect. <laughs> so perfect <laughs> that there was somebody who was just hobbled and hurting so bad trying you, to get off the Do you think the they ice. were just like, "Hey, Coburn, just go just down real drop. quick. Just go." Was it Coburn? Yeah. I think it was, yeah. Uh, and, I want you to grab your eye like it's cut. <laughs> hit the ice. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Duchesne was just like, "Okay, can we hurry this train along? I got to get the hell out of here. Let's let's move it, please. I I can't I gotta wait go to out get to my Sweden. I can't wait to get my jersey off." Yeah, oh my how about God. that? He finally gets off of Avalanche in his yeah. first games in Sweden against the yeah. Avalanche. The Avalanche. I and the hype too uh, from the Avalanche broadcast I thought was kind of hilarious. They were following him around in the locker room as he's like exiting the building. Well, apparently he had his bags packed, packed before the yeah. game. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey, which? Why are you even in the lineup? Yeah. Why? Why yeah. are you in the lineup? Maybe he thinks after the game. I, 
And then that's, he's just like, I'll just go straight to the airport. It's ridiculous. The game. No, I, I, I if know. I was Joe Sackick, I would have been like, listen, things are heating back up again. No, I think Joe Sackick did it on purpose. It's just like, hey, you got to fucking you. prep for a game. Yeah. Maybe get a goal for us before you leave. Yeah. Um, oh, how awesome would that have been? Oh, God. Score a goal, get I off. I just walk off. Just oh, get off. God. Oh, my God. That would, that would be the way to go. That would absolutely be it. 100%. And then go to Sweden and just drop one in the first mm-hmm. minute against that same team. Yeah, I, this is the first time since Doug Gilmore got traded from the Blackhawks that I've heard of a player getting traded during the game. Um, John Michael Lyles during the warm-ups of Winter Classic. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yep. How? that That's that, the absolute that's worst. That's shitty. That's the yeah. absolute worst. That's because awful. Because how hyped are you for that fucking yeah. outdoor game, once-in-a-lifetime experience, and then, hey, nice warm-up, kid. Go fucking to Carolina. <laughs> and you know what? It was kind of a meaningless trade, too. I'm pretty sure he went to Carolina. Yeah. I mean... Who are you getting from Carolina that's going to get you anywhere? Yeah. Also, can you imagine being the guy that got traded Yeah. to, I think it was Toronto? You missed it a, a day by a day. <laughs> no, a couple hours. Yeah. Oh, if sucks. I'm that guy, I'm like, get me on yeah. the plane. Like, if it's not done, like, just get me on the plane now. <laughs> I'll be ready. I yeah. swear. I, I'll, I will sign the contracts Put later. Put me in the just, lineup, coach. Come on. Um. So the trade. That was big. Like it really was. It like, was honestly. It was great. Colorado walked out with a lot. They walked and out they with did well, and I think it was. Yeah. Sure. It felt like it was more than what they were originally asking for. It just felt like that. Well, the, I the think original it was because it was it two was teams a three involved. Way yeah. Trade. What was? Could somebody pull up what the original trade was supposed to be? The original thing I was I looking. Remember. It was like I thought it was two f- to Colorado. Wait, the original three way yeah. or what? He they were originally asking for. No, it was the the original three way um, because it was Duchesne to Ottawa, Tourist to Nashville, and, and I think Ekholm, Ekholm to Colorado, yeah, and then with some like picks, picks yeah. yeah. And it turned out being Duchesne to Ottawa, Tourist to Nashville, who also signed a six year, six million dollar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, no, no trade clauses. No, no trade. Clause. Yeah, no, no yeah. trade clauses. None of them. Hashtag no. Fire Stan. Um, so to Colorado, Samuel Gerard. Vladislav Kemenov, Shane Bowers, Andrew Hammond, Ottawa's first and third round picks, and Nashville's second round picks. So they Andrew Hammond not, might be like the the low key the low biggest key pick guy. I, I, I think so too. And um, Ottawa's especially pick, with Varlamov being hit, so hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ottawa's first round pick too is top ten protected though. So if for some reason Ottawa falls to the top ten in the draft this year, they can choose not to give them that pick. But then they would have to give 2019's first round pick regardless. No matter what. No matter what. Huh. But I don't think that's going to be an issue. No. That fucking shit is so crazy when it's like, oh, we get a top 10 pick for sure, but uh, you can't have it. And like, yeah. oh, fuck. The conditions are so ridiculous. This yeah. is like starting to turn, like, NHL trades are starting to turn into like NBA style trades now. Like, I, w- I wouldn't know. Like, just look, because I, I really like like the. The front office side of stuff. So I always like when NBA and MLB trade line comes around, I look at their stuff. NBA, they have like, oh, the it's a first round pick, but less so and so does this, and then that comes that. Like that was the yeah. first time I saw that like protect the top ten protected. I've never seen that in NHL before. I don't know. Yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. Oh, but also it's pretty cool. Kind of good um, for Sackick. Good for him though. After all the shit he was getting for holding out. Well, I mean, Duchesne came up to him last December and was like, hey, I just need a fresh start. I need I need to get out of here. I need a fresh start. Well, not only that. And he told him, just be patient. Be patient isn't 11 months later. Be patient yeah. is like off season. Yeah. Figure it out, bud. Trade deadline. Um, so I didn't, I didn't read the whole thing, but there's a small article about he got into Ottawa today or yesterday, one of the. I think it was today. Had him in last night, man. What I mean, number? I think it was. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> 95? ninety-five. Ninety-five. Yeah. Mixing his two childhood numbers. Nine and five. Yeah. Um, but his a lot of ninety-five. Na, 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 Please don't. don't. Na, na. Please don't. Can we go on with the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously everybody kept asking, you know, like why'd you want out of Colorado and like how, like all those types of questions that everybody wants to know, and basically he said. I have eight NHL playoff games under my belt in my career, and that's not anywhere near what I want to be. I want to be a Stanley Cup champion. I want to be a, on a Stanley Cup contending team, and fuck is Ottawa a Stanley Cup contending team. Not, not only that, but like I remember a couple games ago, Guy Boucher, who is unreal. I love him. He's a great coach. That's Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> just had to do it for, you know, <laughs> the comedy's sake. You guys, you should have seen the look that he just gave me. He got so scared there for about half a second. Yeah. He went, oh, <laughs> who is that? Is that? Yeah. yeah okay. Um, he, he said, um, we're not technically a dream team, but we're a team full of dreamers, and that's all I can ask for. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. So that's who I want behind my bench. That's <laughs> and adding Matt Duchesne, yeah, a lot I'm, closer to a I'm dream team. I'm very interested to see how he uh, is able Adjusts. to adjust to their style of play. Yeah, because very it's, defensive. Well, you know, Bobby Ryan had a, a very difficult time. Yeah, but Bobby Ryan didn't come from the Colorado Avalanche, yeah. the worst team in the league last year. Well, yeah, but I mean, Matt Duchesne was also a minus thirty something last year, right? Yeah, who wasn't on that team? Well, yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm well, saying. Did, like, did, did no, I understand. Jacket? He's really gonna have to figure out his his defensive side of things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they play a different kind of game. But you know uh, what though? He might. Hey, I mean, it Eric might be Carlson was minus five the other day. I don't think they're worried about that. Yeah, that was a real <laughs> hit to the crackers. That was terrible. Um, yeah, it's definitely gonna be an adjustment for him. But I, honestly, I think he's gonna be so happy to be out of there. He's oh yeah, not he's, in he's, like, like, he's in his own providence. He's ready. Like he's in his own providence. I bet they could be like, "Can you play with your stick upside down?" He'd be like, "Yeah, no, sure. Do you want me to do Lef- that?" 100%. Lefty, lefty yeah. on the knob. Yeah, yeah absolutely. One hundred percent. Shinny stick. You want to play with shit? Yeah, totally. I'll go. Which I would actually kind of. I'm thinking about it now. That should be the All Star game, playing with shinny sticks, because those shinny sticks nowadays are composite sticks. Oh yeah, they are. That would be sick. I'd love that. No, that'd be funny as hell. <coughs> that'd no. be real. You know what they funny. should be doing instead of the All Star break? Go to the, Go to the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, I like what he said better than <laughs> what you said. That would be a lot more fun. That'd be a lot more fun. Uh, Kyle Turris, big payday. Yeah. Out in Nashville. I I he's a center, is he not? Yes. Windmill. Oh. Um oh, you <laughs> dick. <laughs> yeah, he's a center. They are pretty stacked down the middle if I'm not uh if I'm not mistaken. Let me pull it up real quick. We probably should have this done before. Yeah, we Sorry, should. Uh, y'all. Sorry, we're not very uh No, we're not. It's been a whirlwind of a day. Oh, to say the least. Yeah. Nashville. Um, yeah, I got it right here. What are you guys all going for? I'm going cat friendly. I'm going hockey reference. Ooh. I just Googled yeah, NHL depth charts. <laughs> <laughs> um, all on different pages. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Johansson. Yep. Philip huge. Forsberg. Nick Benino. Kyle Turris. Philip Forsberg is a fo- center? Uh, center right wing. Sorry. Johansson and Forsberg are center right wings. Craig Smith, center right wing. Benino center, Turris center, Yarncroc center, Colton uh, Sissons, Goudreau and Sissons. Centers. Pretty hockey. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you got. I mean, you, you throw put you Turris throw, second line there, right? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know who they have technically as their centers right now, since there's. So I, I many, think Benino is hurt. Benino's hurt. Yeah, so I think they're going Johansson, yeah, uh, Yarncroc, Sissons, and Goudreau. Yeah. Buck. So now you put Fuck. Johansson, Turris, Yarncroc. Probably probably Yarncroc, yeah. And then Sissons. And then Sissons and Goudreau's SOL. Yeah. I mean. Fuck. That's. Oh, my God. That's, that's pretty solid right down the middle. Nashville's and scary. Don't forget they have Subban, Yossi, Ekholm, Emlyn, mm-hmm. Ellis, Weber. Arbitson. Irwin. Forsberg. No, that's just their defense. And. Mm-hmm. Ellis is fucking hurt right now anyway. But, yeah, once they... <sighs> that's a oh scary boy. team. And they're that's, still yeah. right there. They're not even full health, and they're still mm-hmm. right yeah. there. Somebody tweeted out, and they were like, um, Ottawa's definitely in it this year. Nashville, all in 2018. All in right now. And that's that's a big boy move for them. Picking up Kyle Terrace. He's not, he's not like Matt Duchesne, where he's so skillful, but... He's such a low key good player. Thirteen of the twenty five guys that they have on their team have less than five years of experience. Nashville, yeah, yeah, but they all have final experience. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I'm, that's what I'm talking I know, about. Like, it, it, it's I. We kind of throw this around. Um, I don't know, like a, a dirty hooker, but um, uh, how often do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I how was, was your to, weekend was, at the <laughs> casino? What, I was what did you to win make there? A, did you take Rick's? Uh, <laughs> Rick Stibbs no, I did St. not. One hundred percent not. I saw East St. Louis and I saw where it was located. I was like, oh <laughs> boy. 
um, it's almost reminiscent of the Blackhawks having a bunch of rookies coming, really, really good rookies come in and kind of take control of the team. Yeah, Penguins too. I'd say more Penguins than Hawks just because of the Penguins' success. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, definitely the Hawks too. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, that's a that's a good hockey team, though. Yeah, that's a very good hockey team. In a, in a banger of a city. Oh, yeah. Nashville's so much fun. It's a blast. So much fun. We actually we almost went to Nashville this weekend instead of St. Louis. I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> you made it through St. Louis, but you couldn't make it through Honky Tonk Town. Oh no, hundred percent not. I my I'd be stuck on Broadway somewhere. Yeah, just dead. I'd pick you up. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. Yeah. I'll probably call Gary. So so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, that was a good trade. I don't know if we're going to see another big one like that until the, the deadline. Yeah, you can't yeah. even think of like any players that could possibly be. Unless it's like a, uh, just a one-for-one one, like Weber and yeah. Soup. Or a Hall for Larson. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of oh, Edmonton. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. That's, Please go to YouTube if, and just watch that. that Nolan's reaction just, there. Sum up Edmonton season so far. Hey, the Hawks lost to them. These poor bastards need scoring on their wings. Yeah. Who would have thought when you trade Eberly and Hall, and you don't replace them, that you're going to need scoring on your wings? Well, I, I who, was, who, who, and you signed Milan Lucic. Yeah. What the fuck <laughs> do you think's going to happen? And Zach Cassian. <sighs> that was a step. That right there was a Stan Bowman deal. Where oh, God, you yeah. sign him just because of what he did in the playoffs? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what that was. The Brian Bickle deal. Yeah, Bla- uh, Pete Blackburn, I think, uh, on Twitter was like, "Oh no, it was spitting chiclets." Yeah, uh, they were like, "We, Peter Trelli got us a 2011 Stanley Cup, and we're very thankful for that." But he did some really dumb <laughs> shit. Like he did some really stupid things, and that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, that's that's hilarious. Um, oh man, and those fans are—they want a cup or death. Yeah. Well, and uh, I can't remember where I heard it. It might have been Steve Dangle. I can't remember, but they were talking about how uh, it might have been spin chicklets again. I don't they know. did talk about it about they did? a lot. Yeah. Um, where they're like Edmonton is a a if you suck you're out kind yeah. of town. Like yeah. they will ride you out of town or. They'll like they'll probably kill you. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, uh, I don't know what the other option is there, but um, maybe let your jersey. Which I understand because the they should be know. used to sucking. I yeah, mean, I know that one well, year. Well, after <laughs> you dangle this awesome year going to the Western semis and last Connor year, Connor McDavid, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, you actually have a pretty decent goaltender. I'd be pretty pissed off too, but but um, that's not us, and we're happy. Mm, well, medium. are we? We're medium. We're medium. <laughs> We're medium. We're not medium. upset like them. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get first four first overall picks, and we still are better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they were talking about, like, Aberly had one. It was a bad year, like a really bad year, but it was just one bad year, and you guys ran him out of town. He's a consistently 50-point getter. Yeah. I mean, and I'm pretty sure he got 50 points last year. Yeah. It wasn't pretty, but. Yeah, you know, and they were know. talking I, I, that same episode on Spit and Chicklets. They were talking about how they traded Hall because he couldn't work with McDavid when he played about one one game together. <laughs> Hilarious! <laughs> Hilarious! Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't care. Yeah. Fuck you guys. I don't either. Uh, can we talk about the best thing that happened all week? And it's uh, uh, probably going to happen again tonight. Okay, I don't know. The Ben Bufflin fight. Ooh, oh god yes. and big boys apparently uh dustin bufflin arrived to the ring tonight and passed jamie ben and jamie ben looked at him and went get ready for round two fuck that. i want to know i want to know though if it was serious or not or if it's oh like, my god because yeah I, I, there was you can never I tell feel like jamie watching, ben's that type of guy that would fuck around like that yeah yeah but watching that fight that didn't look like it that was, was a, a pe- heavy fucking bout right that there. didn't look like it was a very peaceful no. you know all right we should, we I need to do this for my team. That looked like you. I want you dead. Buff kept trying to get away, and Ben's just like nah. Ben didn't want any of it. That was they didn't hold anything back. No, that was old school it's hockey. He didn't fight. hold anything back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, 
I love that was great. That yeah. was a, I, just, that was a I feel great like Buffalo fight. like see them and just be like, oh, oh what the fuck? Like what what did I do? Like yeah. why? Oh, we Buff, did it. Yeah, Buff probably chugged a beer and went okay. No, let's go. <laughs> no, he's he's like the. He's like the kind of guy that like chugs a beer, throws a hit, and then somebody comes to fight him. He's like, no, like get the fucking shit out of here. Come on, I'm not dropping my gloves. Buff I gotta gets, bend over and pick him up later. I feel like Buff gets upset about like the tiny things. Like there was that gif, uh, I think it was last year, where like he was battling along the boards and like he looked up for a quick second and then like looked up again right at the camera, <laughs> just like, yeah, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Get out of my way. That was hilarious. But then somebody wants to fight, and he's just like, "What? Whatever. Yeah, that's whatever. fine. Yeah. I need to see you. if I could find it really quick. They were talking about that all here." Um, they were talking about like buffs never fought the same person twice. Really? Yeah. And let's see. That's weird. Like, he doesn't fight all that often, though. No. Uh, not a big fighter, that guy. Not a big fight guy. Yeah, not huge. Not yeah, huge. Fight Jamie guy. Ben, or Buffalo's never fought anybody twice. Ben has dropped the glove with David Backus three times. Everybody Fuck else was a one-off. Does Bufflin pull uh, uh, what Yarko Ruk- Rutu did to uh, Dion Phaneuf? Oh. If he <sighs> does, I hope That'd be hilarious. it goes down exactly the same way. Yeah. Where he Phaneuf shit. just... Oh, yeah. That was That'd great. be good. That was good. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, so that, that rematch is actually going on right now, I'm pretty sure. Nah, 7.30. Not just quite yet. Oh, close. Um... But all you fans, it probably happened already. Yeah. yeah. So you guys can watch that as you're listening to our Or, or just re- tell so. us we're stupid because it didn't happen yeah. or something. <laughs> tweet us regardless yeah. of what happens. Yeah, just, give, just, just I don't care if you call me stupid. That's fine. Just tweet us. <laughs> <laughs> if I were a betting man, I'd probably lose $130 in What's that, 30 Batman? minutes. I said if I were a betting man. You're Batman? Oh. I'm Batman. No. Yeah, you're right. You're Batman. Yeah. All right, we need to wrap this up before yeah. I... Before I my piss shit. myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, all right. That was episode. Uh, Larmer. Yeah. The episode Larmer. Uh, 28. The Larm Dog. Paint the old show. 28. Steve Larmer. Goes well with your mustache. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Also, yeah. I got plenty of compliment uh, compliments on, on the on the muzzy this weekend. So. Were you, were you passing out were candy? You sh- were you sure that they're no, compliments? But, or, uh, oh, yeah, they were, you, they were. Or were you just so drunk that it's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, reevaluating yourself again. A little bit. A <laughs> little bit. It was pretty funny. Uh, we were supposed to be taking uh, my mom's Jeep uh, down there, but she ended up needing it, so we took my dad's van. So it was just three mustachioed oh, men God. in a van down by the river. Yeah, we got to go. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be around you. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Please don't come home tonight. Yeah. I actually, I probably don't, don't have the time to. So, um, good. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks again to Kendall Coin, too. Yes. Oh, God. Kendall Coin. You were great. Wish you luck. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, be good. <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at WCBP, on Instagram, WCB Podcast, and like them on Facebook, the Windy City Benders Podcast. The Windy City Benders Podcast.